Speaking of something else that's the best, <laughs> here, take the pumpkin and crash it over my head. I'm just going to leave now. When Mari and Will Kemper Bye. started Thomas Kemper Brewery back in 1984, this is the worst show ever, Kim. They had no idea how far the world of craft beer would go. They traveled the world refining their craft and sharing techniques before opening Chuck and Nut Brewery. Considered the grandparents of craft beer, they stopped by for a taste test with our own Terry Holloman. Terry, save me. It's a beautiful day out here on the plaza, and I'm with Mari and Will Kemper. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm so excited to taste some of these beers. But you guys got started back in 1984, and I imagine the world of craft beer was a little bit different then. Mari, what was it like? Yeah, it was really different. I mean, there were only maybe 26 to 30 breweries in the United States that were called microbreweries, mm -hmm. and we were one of them, and there were others here in the Northwest. So we were the hub of craft brewing in America at that time. You guys were the godfathers of it all, so to speak, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Will, now I know, it, it, again, it was a lot different back in the days, but you peddled your wares all over Seattle. Yeah. What was it like for you back then? Um, I just was trying to do the best I could, and it, it's interesting because it was such a new frontier. And so, tr and so there were, wasn't a lot of support, but we did rely upon Rainier Brewing for a lot of assistance oh. for some of the technical issues that, that we had. Okay, well we are now in 2021 and craft beer is all over the place. You guys brought some good stuff here for me to taste. So what are we talking about here today? What's going on? Well, I think Will was gonna talk about our Kolsch first. Yeah, so by which... the way, this Kolsch, tell me something about this. So these are, the one we're tasting now is an ale? It is an ale. Okay. And it's due, whether an ale or a lager, it's solely due to the yeast strain being used. Okay. There are some characteristics that you can't make lager beer with ale yeast. However, this is kind of a cross, a Kolsch, and it comes out of Cologne, Germany. And if you're in Germany, the only way you can make Kolsch is to be within 20 kilometers of downtown Cologne. Oh. So to make this style elsewhere, we refer to it as a Kolsch style. Mar and I just got back from the Great American Beer Festival, where in this particular style, there was over 180 beers, and we were fortunate to win the gold seven. medal in the Colch. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's the fourth gold medal. Uh, the Colch has won at that category, as well as gold medal in the World like. Beer Cup. Right. And when you're tasting beer, make sure you've got a good head. You're looking at it because those little tiny bubbles in there, if you, mm -hmm. if you clear off your glass, you'll see the tiny bubbles. Right. That is a big part of what Colch should have. Okay. If it doesn't have those tiny bubbles, you're not really Are drinking not really drink a good Colch. This is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to try this one here. This this is the Kirin? Uh, no, well, this, this is, is the one that you guys made. Asian style lager. And the okay. thing about this beer, the reason we're making it is Din Tai Fung, the noodle. Oh, you know yeah, that? it's one of my favorite restaurants. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, they wanted an Asian style lager to go with their food. Oh, I can see why this would go well with that. Yeah. yeah. This probably would and go we well with like a, 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 a sushi or oh, rice dishes, too. noodle dishes. Any, any, yeah, any oh Asian goodness. style food. Would, and then this is what it was modeled on. So when we look at a beer, we look at the color, we look at the head. It's a little darker than our head. Uh, we look at the, smell the flavor in that. that. And then we, mm. then we I guess we, mm, hops. Hops mm. and malt, yes. lots of malt in okay. that one. So go ahead and taste it. Oh, that is good. So that's their that's rendition, too. but this I, is yeah, that our was really rendition. Good too. This is, I could tell <laughs> a little bit of the similarities as opposed to those, which are much yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we were designing the recipe for that though, for our Asian lager, the people at Din Tai Fung, they, they liked our Helles lager, which is a German lager. So we developed the recipe for that as far as it's somewhat of a German style lager, the Helles, but with an Asian influence there. And so it's kind of a mix. So it's unique, unique in the beer world as far as that particular mix. The yeah. last one we want to try the is something that's kind of special, right? This is special because this this is coming from Carlsberg Brewery in, where is Carlsberg? It's in Denmark. But in why, Denmark. Yeah, but why we chose this one, it has historical considerations. In particular, for example, Pasteur. Pasteur in the 1800s. Louis Pasteur. Yeah, Louis, Louis Pasteur. Pasteur. You know, he, did, he actually worked for the Carlsberg Laboratories towards development of pasteurization. Then, 
going forward in the early 1900s, there's a fellow named Soren Sorensen who is a lead chemist at Carlsberg. He developed the novel concept of pH. Mm -hmm. So can you, know, you imagine pH that Like we have pH <laughs> waters and yes. pH deodorant and such. All for the sake of better beer. That's yes. the bottom line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming here joining, uh, joining me. And you know, fun. let me taste your wares. I feel like yeah. I have my own personal beer sommeliers now. So I can call you guys up <laughs> when I need some help, right? Anytime. We'd love it. <laughs> Thank you guys Thank you. very Thanks, much. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Terry always gets the toughest assignments, <laughs> right? so great. But we're going to get uh, to taste this, too. You can find Chuck and Nut Beer in stores throughout the area. For more details, go to our website. And lucky me, or should I say lucky us. Lucky us. The Kempers made sure that we have some beer to try. This is their award-winning Chuck and Nut Kolsch German-style ale. Now, you have to call it, you have, you have to, to call it Ger uh, Kolsch style because Kolsch style. unless it is made actually in the region of Cologne. Oh. By the way, uh, I have some really nice Cologne on today. Uh, it is. It has to be called Kolsch style. You can't just call it Kolsch. Like champagne from France. Actual right. champagne has to be from champagne from Yakima. Is different. Same idea. <laughs> it All is. right. Champagne style from Let Yakima. Me... Mm. Oh. oh my gosh, that is good. This is the dangerous that kind though because good. it's it goes down easy. It does. You know what? What? Putting down the beer because I'm picking up the drumsticks. Mm -hmm.